video where we make a trivia topic into a similar note. I'm your teacher, Tin! And I'm your teacher, Kyung! And we're trying to make everything in the book digestible. Without further ado, let's dig into the content. For this video, we will be simplifying the Bruner's Constructivism Theory. Oh, so we're trying to be a theorist here, huh? Maybe? <laughs> The notion of the Brunner's constructivism theory is learning as an active process. Therefore, that means that learning is built by adapting new information based on prior knowledge. He said that there are three representations of knowledge. First, we have the inactive. This mood happens at a very young age from birth to one year old. This is learning is represented by movement or action. For example, a child much might show to others that he knows how to float in the water without explaining it or drawing it. And we also have iconic, which happens one to six years. That means the learning through images. That implies that people or the students learn through models or pictures. That is why it is beneficial that we are learning a new topic, there is a diagram or example to come along with the verbal information. Lastly, we have the symbolic and this learning is through abstract or symbolic representations. In this stage, most information is stored in words, mathematical symbols, or in other symbolic systems. For example, a child solving a math equation is representing his knowledge symbolically through numbers or a child might also tell his teachers that he knows something by writing an essay or journal that is in form of words now let's go deeper to bruno's principle of instructions he has four first readiness this means that teaching should focus on the interactions and context that motivates and enables students to learn second the spiral organization the teaching must be organized in such a way that students understand it. It is also very crucial that the teacher lay his points on a chronological order to avoid misconceptions and misunderstanding. Next, the student will easily comprehend it. And lastly, we have instructions should be done to, should be designed to facilitate an extrapolation and or filling the gap. Now, regarding this second principle, the spiral organization, let us go to the legal basis of it. Section 5 of Republic Act 10.533 says that curriculum shall use the spiral progression approach to ensure mastery of knowledge and skills after each step. Now, let us see how or what ideas are this spiral curriculum are based on. First, students revisit the same topic multiple times to reinforce learning. Second, the complexity of subject matter increases as the child's cognitive ability develops with age. That is why you may notice that the lessons on your first grade are the same lessons on your second grade, but it has like a more spice to it. Lastly, we have students' familiarity with the subject matter or ideas enables them to grasp the more difficult concepts in a deeper way. So since you already have a background on a specific study, no matter how difficult it turns, you still have the main idea or the key point of it because you already had tackled it on your previous years. What are the significant aspects of the theory of instruction, you may ask? Teacher Kyang? Brunner posits that there are four significant aspects of theory of instruction. First, we have the predisposition to learn. Any subject should be taught in a way that it is appropriate for a child's cognitive ability, of course. Second, is the structure of knowledge. As a result, a body of information must be organized in such a way that the learner can easily comprehend it. Why is this so? Because an understanding of a subject's fundamental structure makes it more understandable and suitable fundamental concepts or patterns are essential for producing information that can be transferred to another context. And an understanding of a subject's fundamental structure makes it more understandable. That's why it is really important that the knowledge should be structured or organized. Third, we have the effective sequencing. In order to increase the degree of complete comprehension and mastery, awareness is presented 
in increasingly challenging ways. And we also have the reinforcement. Rewards and penalties should be carefully chosen and timed. This reinforcement, we've already talked about it in the previous videos. Perception, conceptualization, learning, decision making, and inference making, according to Brunner, all requires categorization. Consequently, he made three categories, and these are the identity category, which objects are included based on their attributes or characteristics. And we also have equivalent categories, where it is centered on similar features, include guidelines for combining these categories. And lastly, we have the coding system, where to be aware of the sensory feedback and higher cognitive functioning, they are important in organizational variables. For further information, Brunner's ideals gave birth to the idea that people often see the world in terms of similarities and differences. This is a significant contribution as to how the people make their models or worldviews. And that's it, people! Brunner's constructivism theory and a simpler note. You know what? I think this theory really makes sense because we have our school at our schools the spiral curriculum where we teach the second grader students how to add whole numbers and then when they move to the third grade they are now taught the addition of decimal numbers of course it's kind of hard but since they are they were taught how to add they have a background yeah about addition right yeah and of course while i was studying this theory i really understood that you know, you don't have to scold your student for not showing his knowledge in in drawings or yes. or in actions because a lot, there are other students who are representing their knowledge through words, through symbols, and there are also others who are representing their knowledge through actions. So you don't scold your students for not representing um, knowledge in such a way that you you want them to uh, to represent their knowledge because there are three representations of knowledge according to this theory. And of course, maybe that is also our advice to the teachers that do not scold your students, instead um, encourage them and find which field are they good to. Yeah, but before we end, we have here our mind map so that you can grasp everything that we've said in this video in an easier way. Of course, leave us a comment and tell us how your small information evolve into a great knowledge and also if you like this video give me a thumbs up, up and hit that digit on our grade <laughs> again see you all aboard in our next video where we make another tricky topic into a simpler note i am teacher teen and i am teacher kia reminding you to always wear, wear your mask and stay, stay negative, negative.